Hello, welcome. This is the uh, Edexcel C4 um, June 2015 past paper. Okay, so this is question one. Um, and we're told that this is just the function of x, which is uh, 4 plus 5x all to the power of a half, in other words, all square root. Uh, we're also told that the modulus of x is less than 4 fifths. Therefore, that quite clearly just states it's between 0 and and four fifths the value of x, either that's plus or minus, okay? Right, so um, the first part A just says a set, uh, find the binomial expansion of four plus five x all to the power of a half, okay? And it's ascending powers up to and including the term x squared, so it just means find the binomial expansion up to x squared. Okay, then the first thing we need to do is put this in the correct form. It's in 4 plus ax, now that a being a 5, we need to make it in the form 1 plus ax, because that expansion that we commonly use in C4 works for any expansion, but it has to be in the form 1 plus ax, where a can be any number, obviously. So, what we need to do is take out the 4 as a common factor. By what I mean is divide the inside by 4 and take out the 4, but keep the power with the 4. Okay, so in other words, we 4 to the power of a half, and we divide inside by 4. So it's obviously 1 plus 5x over 4. And it's all to the power of a half. Okay, so obviously 4 to the power of a half, square root of 4. Okay, that's just 2. You can just replace that with 2. So what we do is we find the expansion of that and times it by 2. Okay, now it's up to you whether you compare it to the equation in your formula sheet in terms of you do it 1 plus ax to the power n. I always like to do this so I remind myself what a and n are. Okay, so if when we compare it, a is, well it looks like 4 fifths, but you've got to remember this ax is a whole term. Okay, so a refers to uh, equal to 5x over 4. The n, just in this case, just refers to a half. Now you can just use the basic expansion for this, okay? So when we do the expansion, obviously we have to times it by 2, but it's 1 plus a n, a being 5x over 4, and n being a half, okay? And we add n, take n times n take 1, so it's a half times minus a half over the factorial of 2, which is just 2 times 1, times a squared, okay, which is just 5x over 4, all squared, but it wants it just up to the term in x squared, and that's quite clearly going to give us it up to the term in x squared. So we need to work out all of this individually, very, very simple, okay, so obviously the first term is just 1, and then it's plus um, 5x over 8, Oops, sorry. okay, and obviously that would be a minus, okay, so when you work that out, you get take away 25x squared over 128. Okay, and that's just a case of expanding this now. Okay, so obviously just times each term by 2, which gets you 2 plus um, 10x over 8. Okay, and then you do 2 times 25x squared over uh, 128. Okay, so you just get minus 50x squared over 128. Okay, there's no need to write plus C or anything like that because we're not integrating, so that is your end answer. And, oh, sorry, it's not your end answer because it wants it in simplified form. So we can simplify these terms, okay? So it simplifies down to 2 plus 5x over 4. Okay. Um, take 25x squared. over 64. Okay. So, as I said, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, okay, so... Yep, so hopefully that is all clear. Now, you could have just gone straight from that to that in terms of times it by... Um, You know, you don't have to follow dipped minus 50x squared. You could have done straight to this cancelled method. If you did it on your calculator and just input the numbers, you could just go straight to this simplified method. You might not have had this 
um, unsimplified where you had to therefore simplify it. You could have just gone straight to the answer from uh, this, but I did it just to show you where you would go, okay, if you didn't. So that's the answer to part A. Um, as you can see, it's, it's very, very simple, um, but I'll just write it at the top, okay? So that is equal to 2 plus 5x over 4, take 25x squared over 64. Now this next bit um, is a little bit weird because it's not the usual kind of question. And I think um, even though it's an easy question, um, it's very easy to slip up on. But then hopefully from, if you would have done part B in a way that I kind of expect some of you might have done, you would have got to part C and like, oh, well I've just done that. And what I mean by this, well if you look at, at um, Part B, it says time, find the exact value um, of, of this expansion, so 4 plus 5x to the power of a half, when x equals 10. Now, your natural insight, uh, in, well, instinct um, would tell you, okay, well, if you want the value, and we've just worked, naturally, when you just work out the binomial expansion of something, it tells you to find the value when x equals equals something, in this case a tenth, your natural instinct is to say, ah, well, x equals a tenth, I've just done the expansion for this, and the expansion for that is this 2 plus 5x over 4, take 25x squared over 64. So, why don't I just sub in x to be a tenth? Now, you can tell by the way I'm talking, that's completely incorrect. And because it wants the exact value, that won't give you an exact value. And also, when you look at part c, it says, Substitute x to be a tenth into your binomial expansion for part a and find an approximation for root 2. Now what that means is this 4 plus 5x, that will be, when, when you make that equal to root 2, okay, um, you should get x to be a tenth, okay, but what I'm trying to point out to you is it says in part c, sub x to be a tenth into your binomial expansion, so if you'd have done that for part c, so part B, sorry, like I kind of expected you might have done, you should have realised, well, it's not going to ask you the same question twice. So all we simply do is sub x to be a tenth into this 4 plus 5x. We don't sub it into the expansion, we just simply sub it in and use our calculators. Now, it's kind of weird that because I wasn't expecting that. So it's 4 plus 5 times a tenth, okay? And you square root that, okay? And obviously, 4 plus 5 times a tenth, well, if you turn both in terms of a tenth, it's... Um, 40 over 10 plus 5 over 10 Sorry, I'm going to over the line Sorry, Yeah, the square, the, the square root, okay which gets you 45 over 10 okay uh, to the square root, okay, which is obviously 4.5. Oh, it's in your own set, that's going the wrong way. Sorry, one sec. Um, sorry, if you do 4 plus 5 tenths in your calculator, okay, it's 9 over 2, okay, and when you square root that, okay, you square root top, square root bottom, so square root 9 over square root 2, okay, well, square root 9 is 3, and it's 3 over root 2, but it wants it. It says, um, give your answer in the form k root 2, where k is a constant to be determined. So it wants k to be um, a constant, and it's times by root 2. Well, root 2 is on the bottom. You should know, for a start, that we don't like having the third on the bottom, which is what a square root is. So we rationalise the denominator. In other words, we times top and bottom by root 2. Okay, so that obviously gets us 3 root 2 over 2, okay, and you want it in the form k root 2, where k is an integer, uh, sorry, k is uh, a constant, okay, not an integer, so it's k root 2, okay, where k is obviously 3 over 2, and you need to state that k is 3 over 2. Now, I could have done it from this way, and what I originally was doing, because that's a natural way if you weren't going to use a calculator, but you would get the same answer, in other words, 4, 4, 45 over 10 is equal to 9 over 2, okay, when you square root that, okay, you get the same answer as 3 over root 2, which obviously when you do the same thing as over here, you get um, 3 root 2 over 2, okay, where k is 3 over 2. Now, if you'd have done that in your calculator, just done the square root 
of um, 4.5 over 9 over 2, you would have got straight to this this answer, okay? Because your calculator has done that method, but you need to show that. You need to show that method to get the marks, okay? And obviously you need to show, well, you can do it anyway, so it's nice to be safe. Okay, so obviously, as I said, that gets you your 3 root 2 over 2, where k is equal to 3 over 2, okay? So, that's the simple way. Now, the next little bit is what you would have expected to do for part b. And it says, using your value of x to be a tenth, sub it into your binomial expansion for an approximation to root 2. Okay? So, it's literally just, well, k, sorry, x is to be a tenth, not x over tenth, sorry, x is equal to a tenth, and you sub that into this binomial expansion you got for part a. Now, as Keith point out here, as with all maths and physics questions, you get your carry on marks. So, for some reason, if you'd expanded this wrong, but you'd sub x to be a tenth incorrectly, you still would have got the marks, okay? So, don't feel like you lose all the marks straight away. Okay, so this is equal, uh, so the expansion is equal to 2 plus 5 times a tenth over 4, take 25 times a tenth squared over 64. Okay, and obviously, when you add all them together, uh, you get you get three root two over two, which is exactly the same as your answer to part B. Okay, so. What I might have expected them to say now is, well, what's the error in that? Well, there's no error, because that's why they haven't asked it, okay? But if there was a slight difference, they might have asked, well, what is the, the error, okay? And obviously, you would do, um, you stand to think of the difference between these two over the correct value, or the true value, which is obviously the one you worked out in part B, times 100. So in other words, it'd be your answer to part B minus your answer to part C over the yeah, answer part B times 100, and that'd be your percentage error. But because they're very identical, the, the margin of error would be very, very small. Now, I think it doesn't come out to be quite 3 root 2 over 2, um, but the answer to it is very equivalent, so you put it to equals to 3 root 2 over 2. Okay, so thanks for watching. That's the end of question 1 for C4, June 2015, um, question number 1. Okay, uh, obviously we're moving on to question number two next, which is just a case of implicit differentiation with a little bit of a twist. But as I said, it's nothing too difficult, um, and it's more as we get obviously we'd love to the end of the paper. And I think question eight on this paper is quite difficult. So if you want to skip to the hardest question, I potentially would skip to question eight. Okay, so that's watching. Hopefully, we'll see you in the next question.